Before we get into this interview, Jake and I are here real quick, and we just wanted to talk to anyone who is not aware of what our show is. We do these interviews uh, as they come up with cast members, both on the new seasons and on old seasons, things like that. But we also do weekly recap shows for the current seasons. We we are spoiler free, so you know you don't have to worry about us like giving any hints or leaking any information, things like that. But we are currently watching through Total Madness, and if it hasn't aired yet, we don't know what's happened. So if you're looking for a podcast who is going to do weekly recaps as well as interviews, you know, and you're just checking us out because Maddie plugged it or something like that, we appreciate that you're here. Absolutely. So uh, we're uh, this was a fun little interview. Um, you know, we got into uh, some some cool little stuff as far as how she ended up in Nashville, where she, you know, came from everything, her career on reality television. But uh, you the know, the camera the, just follows her everywhere she goes. Yeah, yeah. Which we talk about a little bit. So, but uh, you know, I would love to do these plugs, Zach. But I always manage to botch it, so I'm going to let you uh, do our I'll, plugs. Is that I'll, okay? I'll do our plugs. I've, I've done them plenty of times. So, yeah. again, if you are new here, you can find anything from us, smashnetspodcast.com. It has links to all of our places to listen, download, things like that. It also has links to our Patreon, which patreon.com slash smashnetspodcast is the direct URL. We have a really tight-knit Patreon community, and Patreon gets ad-free episodes. They also get our interviews at least 24 hours in advance and we also take questions for all of these interviews as well as you know depending on the level of patreon membership there's a slack group where we have a ton of fun and there's exclusive content on our patreon that is only there like we do an off-topic podcast we do some other podcasts that are only on patreon sometimes video is only on patreon and so again if you love the challenge and you want to kind of get more involved in a tight-knit community of just fans honestly patreon.com slash smashing heads podcast and again you can follow us on social media everywhere at smashing heads on twitter and then at smashing heads podcast uh on facebook instagram things like that so we uh let's not let's not delay anymore let's get into the interview have a good night everyone welcome back to smashing heads podcast this is another interview with a current cast member as always i'm joined by my wife hannah hey 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 my best friend jake is here remotely How's everybody doing tonight? Also, I forgot to say, my name is Zach, but you don't care about me. Nobody needs to know that. Yeah, you're here because you want to hear Maddie Bro, who is joining us uh, over the internet, because obviously we can't be anywhere uh, right now because people are still quarantined. So how you doing, Maddie? Hey, guys. What's up? So we we met you at Challenge Mania Nashville in January, right? What, January? Yes, it yes. was the end of January. Okay. Yes, and, you did. What an amazing day, by the way, Zane. Yeah. It yeah, was it, was, it was super fun. That, was that the first one you've been to? Yes, it was. Yeah, that that was our first one as well. Um, we knew you were in the Nashville area, and so it didn't like surprise us that you were going to be at that event. But uh, it was really awesome getting to meet you, and like it kind of blew us away when we were just like, "Hey, we do a challenge podcast, and we're in Tennessee," and you were like, "Oh, when do you want me to come on?" And we're like, <laughs> "Whenever you want." <laughs> I was like, listen, I might, yeah, I do remember that. Of course, I try my best to, you know, get on everything I can, but sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But since you guys were here in Nashville, I'm like, come on, just send, shoot me an email, I'll make this happen. Yeah, yeah. so we're, we're actually about two hours, uh, is it west? Yeah, west of Nashville. Southwest. Yeah, and, you know, right down I-40, but we're basically between Memphis and Nashville. But we, we go to enough that we, we kind of can consider either of them our home if we need to. I went to school right outside in Murfreesboro, so I, I was right up around there for four years. And I, I lived in Memphis for a while, so. Well, I've been to Memphis, but I live in Nashville, but I love Memphis. I love so, Hill Street. Yes, how, how did is great. How did you end up in Nashville? Because you're not from there, right? No, I'm from South Louisiana. I'm about 45 minutes from New Orleans. Hey. And I lived in New Orleans for a while when I was on my first show from Party Down South. And then I knew I just wanted something different. So I put L.A., Miami, and Nashville in a hat. And I pulled L.A. three times. I completely loaded my car and came to Nashville. Well, I will say the cost of living in Nashville is probably much cheaper than it is in L.A. Yeah, I mean, I'm all about chasing your dreams when I'm not going to sleep in my car. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I need a bed. I need at least eight hours. And then I'm okay. So my, my sister and brother-in-law live in San Francisco. And they moved 
they're from Nashville area too, and they moved back to Nashville at one point, and they got they were in like a one bedroom, like tiny apartment in San Francisco, and then moved to Nashville and got a three story brand new condo for half of what they were paying in San Francisco. Like it, it's crazy to live out there, and we have friends from like Logan from Rotten Bananas and all that that live out there, and it's just so cheap here compared to where they are. Yeah, I mean, I save money when I can. I'm all on a budget, okay? There's and nothing I'm wrong about with that. that. Yeah. Yeah. What you gotta Listen, do. if I could get it somewhere else, then that's where I'm doing it. And there's still a lot to offer uh, in Nashville, too. Like, it's it's still a relatively large city. Yeah, and it's, oh, yeah. it's grown like crazy in the last 10 years. Well, just in the last three years since I've been here, it's crazy how much stuff has changed. But, I mean, I love it. I think it's great for the locals and bringing all that money here, so... I'm just enjoying it. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure what your connection with Nashville was. Now I know it's hat related, and so that's, that's <laughs> well, no. So know. I was my first show was on CMT, which was country music television. So I had traveled to Nashville quite a few times. Okay, yeah, I, I knew Party Down South was on CMT, but uh, we have never watched that show just in full transparency. Like we're we watched the challenge, and you know we interview people that come on from Big Brother, and we don't even watch that, and so. Uh, oh yeah, I got you. That's where relation to Nashville was for me. Okay, that that makes complete sense because we have friends who are like musicians in country bands and whatever, and they do the CMT awards and all that every year. Um, oh, it'll it, it'll lock you in, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I like again. We we love Nashville. We haven't obviously been in a while, especially since this uh, this whole quarantine happened. But we're hoping that once everything kind of starts to mellow out a little bit and it's safe enough, we'll be able to get back up there soon. Yeah, same. I feel that. I'm yes. ready to get out. Yeah, I, I saw you were. Weren't you in uh, back in Louisiana recently? Yeah, so I went down. Uh, we had a little scare in my family. So as soon as I heard somebody could have been sick, I packed my car about 5 p.m. and I said, okay, I'm headed. I'm coming that way. Like, no question about it. And then I got there. So I was there for about 55 days. But then it was like I kind of had to get back to work, get to my stuff back in Nashville. So. I had to leave, but, you know, doing what I can, be where I can. Well, we hope everything is good with your family, obviously. Yeah. Um, it is. Great. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I know this is a scary time. One of our patrons, you know, ended up in the hospital for two and a half weeks in a coma because of all this stuff. And so uh, it's it's a, it's a weird time right now. But I, I, I was wondering. I believe that it is. Listen, I, cheers to that. <laughs> I was Go. wondering if. I know you have a French bulldog. Oh, Brucey. Did he go with you to Louisiana, or did you have someone watching him? No, of course. He takes the road trip with me. Well, there you it's go. It's my road dog. Well, we have certain stops. The, the trip from, like, middle Tennessee to close to Louisiana, that's not too bad of a trip. Yeah, how I long made is that it? I, I can make it, well, nine, I'm going to say nine hours. That's not too It just too depends. Bad traffic like if you drive in the morning certain times that's that makes a big difference because yeah. in between birmingham you'll catch some traffic but for the most part it'll take me about nine hours yeah birmingham can get a little congested sometimes uh we've, we've been through there a handful of times um but yeah I've, I've never been to new orleans hannah's been a couple times or just once just just oh. once um i had i had to to just get down there and experience it um, that was right before we got married, but mm -hmm. I, I love New Orleans ever since that trip. It was like, uh, probably five years ago now. I've been trying to get Zach to go with me, but he's not really sure if he wants to go, but, um, what? Excuse I know. Like, okay. okay. What is your okay. I, I need to know why. Please tell French me quarter, why. Quarter, First of all. Acme Oyster House is my favorite restaurant. I mean, she, yeah, they have Drago. Oh my God. There's so much good food there. I, I, That's I why am I want to go. I am a foodie. I go places for good food. <laughs> I am not opposed to going. That is not ever what it's been. It's just <laughs> like, so with my job and other things, like I have like set vacation times and a lot of time my family as a group goes to some place together and then sometimes her family as a group. And so, and then you and I take a trip. Yeah. It's, it's hard to like work out the scheduling of like when we can get away to just go down there. I, I, I do want to go because I know the food is amazing and like it's a big music scene and all that type of stuff. Um, so I, mean, I just, you have to go either your Mardi Gras or Halloween. 
You have to, that's when I would suggest to go. That's my favorite time of the year. Mardi well, Gras. I, I went the week before Mardi Gras. Yeah, she did. But girl, what? you can go two weeks and they still doing Mardi Gras. We <laughs> celebrate anything in Louisiana. We're like, woo, one month till Mardi Gras. There's a parade. Let's go. Yeah, no, like I, I liked it because we, we, we went, I went with my parents and we went the week before Mardi Gras because we didn't want to get down there when it was like really crazy. Um, but it was like, they were kind of like pre-gaming that week. Cause they were, they were like getting ready and, um, they had all the decorations put out and there actually was, um, there was like almost like a semi parade that came through. It was awesome. I loved it. I loved it. Well, here's what you're getting a taste of Maddie is, uh, I have let these two know, uh, I'm the best friend of this group, right? I'm not married and I have offered my services. I am ready and willing to travel. So when, when, <laughs> when, when we bring these people on that talk about all these places they've been, I can't speak to that, right? Because I haven't done a lot of traveling in my life. And so I let these two know, hey, guys, I'm down for anything. Feel free to invite me. Take you with you. Take me with you. And so Han's making a complaint that Zach won't go. And yet it's here we are true, again. Here we are again. I'm ready and willing to travel, and they won't take me. I, Mardi Gras sounds like a total blast, and, 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 and New Orleans on Halloween sounds like a total blast. So uh, my offer still stands, you guys. <laughs> Let me know the dates. I might be in Louisiana. Yeah. Uh, yes. So yeah, again, it's 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 on the the like if there was a, <laughs> a a schedule of like all the trips we want to take, it's up there. I just don't know when it's going to happen. Make she, it happen, Zach. Okay. Okay. No more well, excuses. You go get down there and go have a good time. Yes. Well, she she bought the like Cafe Du Monde like make your own beignets kit or whatever. It's, it's not been the a, same. It's, it's not, not the same. same. Well, she, it's, it's been sitting be here same. for like four months. She hasn't even tried to make them yet. Because <laughs> oh, I, so I just good. I know it's not gonna even be remotely close. No, but it's still good to I mean enjoy it. My grandma usually will take the biscuits. She'll fry like have a little fried daddy. She'll put her biscuits in there, powdered sugar, honey, maybe some fruit, and it's good to go. See, I like that. I, that I like sounds that. uh that sounds eerily similar to something my grandmother does. Uh, she calls it sop, which doesn't sound as appetizing, but uh, no. she, she pours a <laughs> she, she pours the the sop. blackest the blackest coffee you can possibly make into a little saucer, and then takes her homemade biscuit, sets it on top of it, mashes it down with a fork, and just cuts it up, and it's biscuit dipped in coffee. Basically, basically. that doesn't sound anything like what she no. described. No, but I mean, I think that would sound good if, depending on the type of coffee. If it was community <laughs> dark roast or French vanilla, I mean, I might enjoy the biscuit. Yeah. See, I, I, I'm not a big fan. Like I don't like the like mushy texture that I am assuming comes along with that. And the mm -hmm. name, uh, does not do it any favors calling it sop. Um, yeah, you know, no, not a, at bin, all. a beignet I wouldn't is eat sop. a lot more, uh, it's fancy. Sounded. Yeah, it does sound a lot mm -hmm. fancy. Pinky's up. So, uh, let's let's get into your your how how did you get involved with the challenge, and then you know that led to obviously other things on MTV. But you know, well, you, actually, let's start with Party Down South. How did you, how did you get on Party Down South? How'd that how'd that come about? Oh wow! So I was at Mullet Toss, and we I don't were on. Know the... what that is? Okay, so let me break it down for you. So Mullet Toss, there's um, Florida and Alabama line, uh -huh. and they throw a huge party. It's called Mullet Toss, and it is in the name. You throw a mullet, but it's a huge beach party. It's one of the biggest beach parties in the South. And also you got LSU, Alabama, so it's it gets pretty wild, to say the least. Yeah. So I was there listening to the DJ, and apparently they had some casting directors there and they introduced themselves to me. I did a huge interview, and then I got home to Louisiana after this weekend had happened, and I got a call, and she started telling me about this show, and I was like, I didn't even know I did the interview, but let's rock with it. I'm, you know, I wanted something new in my life, and next thing you know, I'm on a plane, and I'm going to start the first season of Party Down South, and I was 23. So it was just kind of like a whirlwind. It was just like... Oh, this oh, happened, and now you're you're on a TV show. Yeah. So I'm looking up mullet toss right now because I've again we've lived in Tennessee, I, our whole lives, and I've never heard of this. And I we've actually been what? to like these beaches where it's right down. Well, like, I like, I was at the Florabama shore in February. Oh yeah, you have to try it. It's normally during it's right before Hangout Fest in Gulf Shores. 
Listen, okay. you're, you're naming all these fests that no, I don't know anything about. I know all I'm about sorry. Hangout Fest. <laughs> yeah, how do you not? I mean, come on. Hangout Fest? The I mean, best. Jake, do you know what that is? And don't lie. Uh, no, no, cool. I'm unfamiliar with it. I can't. Okay, well, that. you know, they have Bonnaroo, Breakaway, yeah, all that right? in Nashville. So Hangouts yep. in Gulf Shores. It's and then you have like Buku, all that in Louisiana. Just a bunch of festivals. Hannah and I last year went to... Uh, like mobile like dolphin, dolphin island, island area we took the dogs. okay yeah because we, we have an american bulldog which is the like giant big brother of your dog yes that's what i wanted to yeah he's he he's is amazing he's the sweetest dog in the world but he is so dumb sometimes super dopey yeah like he he would never hurt any anyone or anything and, he runs but, into stuff a lot yeah, he's like 90 pounds and so like he just doesn't realize how big he is does he have the big underbite uh, no, no. Oh. He, he looks more like um, like a really, really large pit, but he's got the okay. coloring of a boxer. Did, did you ever see the movie Homeward Bound as a kid? <gasps> oh my God, Sassy and Chance. Okay, yeah. Chance. Chance is an American bulldog. That ours ours is like oh, that, but okay. Brindle. I'm colored. thinking of English. I was thinking of an English bulldog. Oh no, ours is the, like the big version. Like so, he's ninety pounds. Like he's he's a big he's a big. He's very tall, like a small horse. Yeah. He, uh, he's, he's again, not the smartest in the world. Hannah's always wanted a French bulldog. And, uh, we just, we had friends who had an American and they had puppies. And so we just, uh, we ended up getting one of those. Oh, I'm going to have a bunch of French bulldogs. I want a white one to name him Queso. Cute. I, hey, that works. That's good. <laughs> I just, I just sent you a picture of what ours looks like. Okay, wait, hold on. Coming through. Incoming. All right, now hold, now hold on. Oh so, my God, look how cute. I'm a dog woman, y'all. I've been this way since I'm a little girl. My mom said I used to go take all of our dog food and I used to go lock them in the park and then I would feed them. <laughs> all right, so- I so, swear, so, I swear. I need your honest opinion, Maddie. So I have, a, I have shot Zach a picture to send to you because I have a dog myself and I firmly believe, uh, I don't have any kids, so this dog is like my kid, right? So I need I need your honest opinion on who who reigns as uh, the more attractive dog here, if that's fair. With, between you and Zach. Yeah, yeah. So he, I just sent him. Uh, Zach, did you get it? Uh, it just came through. All right. So shoot that to Maddie. Okay, let's check it Look, out. Because I stand by this. I, I think I have the most handsome dog in existence right now. No, you never close. met Bruce. Never met Bruce. I've seen. I Shut have seen up. <laughs> The dog I sent her is not He's your dog adorable. at all. He's adorable. Oh, come on. No, you He's can't adorable. do that. Oh, he, yeah. I literally just Look Googled ugly dog, dog and then sent her like the second I picture. I figured you did. I'm not that crazy. Are you going to no, send her the I, real one? You know, we'll I'm think about it. Okay, too. great. <laughs> great. You can always define a man by his dog. Yeah, well, I must be quite the man because I love my dog. I just I just sent you the real one again. We we just babies well not babies dog set his dog over the it weekend. It was babysitting for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've I've seen your dog. Uh, that's how I knew you had a French bulldog because I see it all He's the time so on, cute. on your Instagram. I want to cuddle. Oh, him. that is a pretty dog. What kind of dog is that? He's a golden retriever mixed with German Shepherd. So he's got like the coat of a retriever and the build of a German Shepherd. Right. Yeah, he's, he's cute. He's yeah. really sweet. We yeah. we had him over the weekend, and he would um, I would take him out in the yard, and he would just kind of hang out around me. Would follow me around a lot. Yeah, again, like he he just hung out, and him and our dog just basically ran each other to death in the backyard. See, now people are going to listen to this interview, and we're going to have to post pictures of our dogs on Twitter and stuff, so people understand why we're talking oh, about them the way we are. Of course, listen, yeah. I'm a dog woman, so I get it. Yeah. yeah. It, again, it's fine. Everybody loves their dogs. Yeah. Uh, you'd be weird if you didn't love your dog, even if it was really dumb or ugly or whatever. Like the, you grow to, <laughs> uh, you know, be attached to him. Oh yeah, mine's my child. He's with me all the time. So let's 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 kind of transition into the challenge now. We got your four Bama, uh, and like how that happened. How did you find out about the challenge? Like, were you aware of the show before it became like a casting opportunity or? Did someone just approach you and was like, hey, uh, you know, the challenge is branching out and looking from people from other shows? Like, how'd that happen? 
So I think a long time ago, I think TJ Lavin tweeted me or I guess that's how he first got my name because someone put my name in there and I remember the tweets that happened, which I haven't found them. But one thing I saw, I was working at a bar in uh, Nashville. It was losers. And I got a call that was like, look, we want to see if you would be up for doing the challenge. And I'm like, yes, without a doubt, please put me on there. So you knew what it was. Yeah, I've heard about it. Now, okay. I hadn't been as um, updated on it just because with working in the bars and all that, I'm not a big TV person. Uh -huh. But I did know a lot of the people who were on the real world that did the real world row row challenges and so on. So okay. I, I recognized a few people, but as far as like the all of it, I just hadn't kept up. Yeah, again, like some people, especially some of the newer crop of people, are like, I don't know anything about it. I just was asked if I wanted to do it. And then, you know, we, we interviewed Fessy a couple weeks ago, and he, he knew about it right away. And, like, he he was he hadn't watched it, but he, he had, like, heard of it because people were like, oh, you're on Big Brother. You should do the challenge. And so. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I knew what it was, but I just I wasn't up to date about who was on it, what was going on, where they were, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so, who who did you know from uh, past seasons? Um, for my first season of the challenge. Yeah. Okay. So walking in, I knew who. Okay, let me see. We're in. I knew who Johnny Bananas was. I knew who Wes was. I knew who Car Maria was. I knew their names, just not what had happened on the challenge. If gotcha. that makes sense, mm -hmm. because I'm on so I mean on social media, I work. I had did stuff with MTV, so of course I was aware of certain people, mm -hmm. just not of the roles from the particular show, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, like, I'd say Bananas is, is arguably the male face of the show, and then Kara would be the female face as of, you know, last season, um, just because they've been on so many, like, more than oh, anyone yeah, else. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, what, was it anything near what you were expecting it? Because you came in on War of the Worlds, like, you know, right after there was kind of a lull and, like, the, the the seasons weren't as good as what they used to be, and then they bring in Justin Booth and reboot the kind of format and all that. Listen, Justin Booth is a maniac, and I love doing his challenges. <laughs> Again, I've, I've never got a bigger thrill in my life. I'm like, this has got to be Booth. Thank you, God. <laughs> it's the adrenaline that makes you just be – it's incredible. Like, we, we don't know him. Like, we know of him, and we know that the seasons he's done are some of our favorites. And you can tell. You can tell such a big difference. I know some yeah, some of the cast members uh, kind of hate him at the same time because he makes you do such crazy things. It's a love-hate relationship. He be, he makes me stronger. Hey, I, I, I face I'm fears. You know, I face fears with some of his. Whereas other ones, you know, and not disregarding anybody else who creates it. I think they're all incredible. They all have their own, you know, theme, whatever. But Justin's booth will make you question yourself. You're like, do I really want this or am I just going to go home? Yeah, because we, we started our podcast during Final Reckoning, like the season before War of the Worlds. And Jake and I had been watching it for a long time. Hannah had started watching it in about the last four or five years. And uh, we were just like, man, we started at a season which is – not our favorite. And then War of the Worlds came out and the new crop of people came through and we liked almost everyone that came on that season. And we were just like this. I, I still think all of us think War of the Worlds 1 is probably a top five season of all time for us. And that, oh, that, that final was insane. that was incredible. Yeah. Whew. Let me tell you, I still feel that final. So uh, was it everything you were expecting it to be? Was it way harder than you thought it would be? Because like... I know a lot of people had really high hopes for you coming in because, you know, just like physically, you, you reminded a lot of people of Laurel, who did really well on these challenges. And, uh, I, again, I don't know what your experience was like because you, you kind of got thrown into the deep end as far as uh, being on a super physical. Yeah, I really know how to pick them. I really know how to pick them. <laughs> yeah. um, for me, honestly, so I when I found out I was going on the challenge, I went in, of course, you know, I was like, all right, let me go watch some, get some clips, kind of like game tape if I have to reference it. Yeah. I was like, let me go see what it's about. However, I started watching and then I started prejudging people. And I don't want to meet people that way because I don't, I've been on TV for years now. I know how TV is. I just, uh, 
I, I don't want to pre judge either Kara or all the people that you guys know because of what's shown on TV. Mm -hmm. I want to go in, you know, make my own judgments there and figure it out while I'm there. So got there and yeah, it was wild. I mean, the first thing we had to do was drop, they had to drop balls. We had to run down this dune, put it in a basket and then solve a puzzle. And that, that was when, uh, like a broke his arm or whatever. Right. Oh yeah. That was insane. So he did that. I remember, um, one of the twins fell down as well. It was, it's very dangerous. A lot of the things that we do and I don't think it gets enough credit because some things I'm like, all right, you signed up for this. You either going to face it or, Oh, listen, just you'll, you'll get all the credit in the world from us because again, watching back through a, a few seasons before this and all, you know, seeing how kind of crazy like that. And you know, that's the only word I can think of to describe it. It's gotten like, yeah, it's, it is dangerous. And like, you have to do a lot of stuff that, you know, everyday people wouldn't be able to do or would be too scared to do. Oh yeah. Uh, now I've also done some of the coolest things of my life from the challenge. I was able to swing from a semi truck. Like there yeah. are some things that are just so sick and so cool. You like, you're so scared, but then you get on it and then you win the challenge. You're like, Holy cow, I can do anything in life now. Well, I so think it's the, just, I think the yeah, I think the Go big ahead. question is, like, have the uh, directors, producers, whoever, for the next Fast and Furious movie called you to do stunt work? Oh, I'm in there, but, oh, okay. yeah. I want an old school car. I want an old school yeah. car. Are you going to be the rock stunt double? <laughs> That's it. That's exactly it. <laughs> oh, by the That's way. exactly so what let's, I'm doing. Let's clear something up right now. So there, there is a, a, a new Twitter account rolling around the whole challenge sphere, which, by the way, we... We're involved in that scene just because our show has to be, but like, of course. W we understand that Stan Twitter can get absolutely insane. Um, there's a new Twitter account that is a challenge height truther, and their whole thing is they're they're saying that you are five eight. Shut up! Yeah, right. I'm, I'm not, not. I'm even not even in heels. You don't have yeah, to cut off my knees. They were like, she's five eight, and I like. I, it it someone we I think it was Logan from Rotten Bananas like interacted with it and I was like it's not even I was like I've got picture proof of like we met her right and I yeah, was like I'm, I'm a little tall yeah I was like I'm six feet tall and like we were eye to eye and sh you were taller than Jake and he's like five ten yeah yeah and, well I'm a, I'm either some people will say five eleven and a half some people will say six foot so I just tell people six foot six foot in heels I'm about six three six four depending on the heel. Yeah, I was like, it. I was like, this is so stupid because this person was like dead set. Like, she says she's five eleven, but look at this picture where she's standing beside Corey and he's only this tall. And I was like, man, I met her in real life. I was like, she's as tall as I am. Oh yes, I am. So listen, we cleared that up. That's all I needed to know. I I knew it when we met you. Uh, like I think you were wearing heels or something that challenge. I was. Me. I was in some cute little um wedge booties, but they look like like a sneaker uh wedge. Yes. Okay. I do remember that because you're wearing. I don't uh, remember that. Uh, the black, joggers. the gold pants. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I do remember the yeah the gold pants. Because I was like, man, oh, I really yeah. need to get a pair of those pants. How did I just remember my whole outfit style? <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, you know, you got to make notes sometimes. Uh, you never know when anyone's going to ask you about it. When it's it. a really top notch outfit, you remember it. You know, I don't I just remember what I wore yesterday. If I'm, if I'm being <laughs> yeah. honest. Uh, so listen, yeah, I just wanted to clear that up. I wanted to bring that up at some point in this interview because, uh, again, like challenge Twitter and whatever is insane. Like these people just make up stuff all the time and like just run with it as if it's like oh, you God don't spoke say. to them directly. <laughs> yeah, again, I, yeah, I know Twitter will get interesting, stuff. you guys. Oh, yeah, I'm, no kidding. I'm, by the way, we are spoiler free, so we don't know anything that hasn't aired yet. Good, so, good. We we like we to, like to be like that. We want to be surprised when we watch, and we want to like give honest opinions on our recap shows and all that. Because you know, if we already knew, like, oh well, we know that this person goes home in two weeks. Like, it kind of ruins the fun for us. Right? There's no more fun. Why would you like even go ruin that? That's like go and see about the new Twilight thing coming out. What's going? I don't know. I feel the same way. I yeah. Oh, we we block or mute anyone that talks about spoilers from our podcast account because we just don't oh, want. It. The block's heavy on my end as well. Oh, I don't blame you. Like, I think everyone we've interviewed, we're like, hey, 
Um, I don't know how you deal with all the crazy people that say the most horrible things to you and feel like it's just fine, like they have a window to do that. Well, here's the thing. After being on TV for so long, I've also learned who I am. And if you have to get online to make me feel like I should be insecure, then you don't need to be on my timeline. And I will block you then and there. I don't deal with that. I don't surround myself with any of that type of energy. And I will not. I'm not going to argue back. I don't have time for that. I'm trying to, like, chase my dreams and make a difference and, you know, enjoy life. So Yeah. Oh, listen, I, I don't blame you. If, if I was in your position, anyone who was, like, like the smallest amount of just – like being mean for no reason, like blocked. You don't need it in your life. Well, I mean, sometimes I'll be like, if y'all think I don't want to get behind this computer and like be sassy, I do. There are some days where I'm like, get off, girl, because you I done typed a whole paragraph and then I have to go back and erase it because I'm like, don't you dare entertain this. So that's I have they, to take that's 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 They want a reaction. They feed off Exactly, of yeah. exactly. I'm not going to do that for you, honey. Yeah, again, like it, it makes them more mad if you just don't respond. And so if our favorite thing is we just mute them and not block them because then that way they don't know that they're blocked. They don't get that satisfaction to know. They just we never see what they type. Oh, have so. the satisfaction, honey, because now you got to create a whole new page. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. So put in the work. I don't care. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you know, like obviously this season's not done yet. We are six episodes in at this point i think episode seven is tomorrow um from what we've seen so far um how is this season compared to war of the worlds one is it is it tougher is like the the, the drama way more like ramped up like what, what do you feel uh well for me honestly this was a tough season i'm very so as you guys know we were locked in this bunker yeah Okay, we were also, it was so cold where we were, I cannot even describe it. Now, I'm from South Louisiana, okay? I'm used to, Humid. you know, a, yes. Yeah. We get here, I've learned how to layer like an onion, and it's, I'm still cold. My toes are always numb. It's, it's a completely different atmosphere than my first season. Now, my first season, I was with Kyle, so... I feel like I went through a tough season, so it molded me to be prepared for a challenge. However, this bunker made us crazy. Yeah, so I, I kind of forgot that you were partnered with Kyle because, you know, at the end they split you off where you weren't partners anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but so we like Kyle. Like, we think Kyle's funny. Like, he's fun to have on the show. His a thousand percent. He's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> But oh, you, he best. also was someone who just got involved in a lot of unnecessary stuff and kind of dragged you along with him, especially oh, that season. Yeah, but he's snaky. As Listen, I love Kyle. I will be a ride or die for Kyle because he is just that entertaining. But he is snaky. Yes. He don't even trust himself. <laughs> well, it's he like said that. He said that in his confessionals. He said, oh, I can't. Sorry, I can't think of the exact wordings, but he's like, I lie to anyone. You know, he says it himself. Well, so you're aware of it. You just got to love him. Like he, a couple episodes ago, again, with the whole blow up with Ashley, like he, he was like leading the charge to vote her in. And then he, like he came up to me in, in the room. And, and then, then he went right up to her and was like, oh, I'm sorry. You had to go through that. And yeah, he was I'm like, oh, it. you slow <laughs> shit. I thought I saw that. I called you out. I was like, that's, that is you know, he's he's playing it up for, for TV for sure. Well, not necessarily that. He's just there in the pot. He Here's the thing, though. Kyle genuinely loves everybody. He, he does, but it's still a game. Okay, let me ask you about that. So we've had a theory for a while that him and Polly 100% play up how much they hate each other whenever, like, they know the cameras are around and when Kara is in the room. Because the couple of interactions in like War of the Worlds or whatever, where they were like on their own and there weren't as many cameras and she wasn't in the room, they were like really kind of funny and like joking back and forth and things like that. Like it does seem like it is semi manufactured at this point. You know, I mean that's on them. Sometimes it is mixed signals, but like I, I also wasn't on the second seasons of uh, War of the yeah. Worlds too. So I don't know how that se season was. Now I can tell you about mine where it was, but I don't know. I think they also like to feed off each other. Yeah. 
I, I agree with that a hundred percent. Well, I've said this, I've said this about Paulie and maybe the same applies to Kyle. Like, you know, you guys are, are in a competitive game, but I think, you know, with, with these guys in particular, they understand that like, they also have to make their mark on television too. Cause if you're not entertaining to an extent, you don't get a call back for this stuff, right? Either that or you have to be like insane. Super good awesome. At performing. Yeah. Yeah. No, what? I get it. And I mean, those guys are, I mean, Kyle didn't Kyle for final, um, what was it? The rivals or final reckoning right before ours vendettas. I think vendettas. Didn't he make it to the final? Yeah. yeah. And like he didn't. And then like you he... got Polly. Polly is just an athlete. Yeah. yeah. That, and that, he just don't give that season with Kyle. Like he kind of came in and no one really knew it's especially us. Cause we didn't watch the show he came from and all that. And like, he didn't really seem like he worked out a lot, and he was smoking and drinking all the time. And then he made the final, and you're like, well, I mean, he's clearly better than a lot of people thought he was going to be. And so, uh, again, like, I, we, we like Kyle. Like, there's a lot of people that, you know, hate him for whatever one reason or another because everyone on the show has people that love or hate them in both extremes. Uh, oh, yeah. But we oh, like yeah. Kyle. Like, we, we, we think he's really funny. Like, he's... He's exactly what you said. He's a snake, and he 100% admits to it. Oh, his social game is sick. He might not, like, be – like I said, he'll sneak up on you, but Kyle was also in the services. So, girl, I think when he was about 18 or 19, I mean, he, like, ran, did all this. So he's got a background. I think wait, he's just under underrated. Wait, he was in, like, the, the like military? Yeah, he was in the military. So he's been around. He's – He's done workouts. He's ran. He's done stuff like that. So he's just underrated. I because he can no hang idea. in. There. Listen, I know it shocked the hell out of me too. I never would have thought. But huh. yeah, that's kind of crazy. Because like I knew he came from. Was it Jordy Shore? Yes. Yes, Jordy Shore. Yeah, and uh, obviously we don't watch that because we don't even get that. But um, uh, you know, with those guys, I I never would have expected Kyle to have like a military background of any sort because he just kind of came in as like this like transient pirate guy who was trying to hook up with Kara and you know I, I I personally like I like most of the British cast that have been added to this show Oh, just to hear them speak and then they speak so fast it's incredible yeah it's funny watching this season when like they'll have to just like do subtitles for them even though we technically speak the same language no, no but they'll, yeah. they'll talk so fast that it it almost sounds like a different language it, it does. And you get used to it, though. So now I've worked with them for two seasons. So now I understand their terminology or what they call biscuit, like just little things you have to get used to. I don't know what biscuit means. So, OK, for us, a biscuit would be like a grand's biscuit. Oh, for so them, it's a like, cookie. Yeah, cookie. It's a okay. cookie. Gotcha. They're yeah. like, you want biscuits and tea by the fire. And I'm just like, OK, wait, you want like <laughs> breakfast biscuit or you want like a cookie? And and they say crisps and they have chips and Cri- chips yeah. and fries and all and that. And French fries. Yeah, you want some crisp. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I thought you were saying biscuit was like some like slang thing. And I was like, I don't know what that means. Oh, no. Biscuit. They call that like the cookies like they do with chips. Yeah, yeah. So did you, did you watch War of the Worlds 2 even though you weren't on it? I've watched up to episode 4, but I got so into it. I grabbed a bike, came downstairs, started riding it. I had to stop because the FOMO was so bad, I couldn't take it. Yeah, it, it was a fun season. I, th- I think the, f- the format was a little flawed, but, uh, you know, again, it, it, was, it was a fun one to watch um, for the it, most part. It was, but, God, I wanted to be on USA, USA's team. Like, let me fight for my country. So, so, so what, what was the deal with that? Did you, did you get called for that season? Were you filming? Uh, um, I was on Floribama Shore. So I did Floribama Shore and then a challenge back to back. Yeah. That's hard. That's a lot of filming. A lot of filming and it's too totally, I went from partying to challenge mode. Yeah. I don't know how you do that. I don't either, girl. People <laughs> wonder why I am the way I am. Okay. So it's like, they're so different. It's almost like you have to kind of like flip a switch. You do. You do. So how, how did you get hooked up with for Bama? Because I mean, it, it seems to be in the same vein as party down South, but obviously a different show. Well, because if you know, on war of the worlds one, you had Gus. Yeah. Gus was a original castmate on floor Bama shore. So I was working at, um, St. Pete's, 
what is it? St. Pete. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm having a brain fart. Oh, St. Pete's Pride Festival. So I was down there at Hubbard's Marina. And then, so I contacted Gus. Next thing you know, I'm in the house. And then they asked me to become a roommate. It's just like you just accidentally end up on more and more TV shows. I can't help it. That's just who <laughs> I'm interesting. You know what I mean? I yeah, just go I, with the flow. I mean, again, like it, it's better to be that way than one of the people that's like begging to be on or like trying to stir up drama on Twitter just because you want to get cast again or stuff like that. I just, I mean, for me, I'm never going to not be who I am because people love me for that. So I, I, I will say you do come across a genuine as opposed to some of the other people who you're like, oh, they're just here to be on TV. You know? Well, I love that this also gave me a platform to either inspire or motivate or make a difference or whatever it is my purpose is. Now, these are fun, but it also creates something better for myself. Mm -hmm. But I also learned to just have fun. And like I said, I, when you're real TV will come to you. You don't have to act. Yeah. Uh, again, like drama you, is real life. We all have drama, so it'll come naturally. You don't have to pretend. Yeah. You, I mean, it always is kind of annoying when you can tell like the people that like really play up stuff or, uh, you know, are trying to manufacture storylines or things like that. Cause as a viewer that watches a lot of these, like you, you can kind of tell. And, you know, even though, I understand like what we're seeing is like 10% of maybe what totally happened, you know, in real life. But you also understand just TVs, like not, I don't know. It's different. Yeah. I mean, again, we've, we, Jake and I have been watching this show, like specifically the challenge since like the early two thousands, like 2003 or so. And Hannah started watching around bloodlines. And so like, we, we watched a lot of these and you know, know. again, it's still it's still something we love to watch and talk about, and you know that's all we can ask for. I will say it's it's super refreshing to hear you talk about like uh, your your purpose and everything, right? Uh, you know, I think people miss with and not just with being on television, but with anything they're given. You know, uh, having you on here and talking about your purpose, and I think it's good for people to hear that. You know, even if it's uh, adversity and everything. Like I've always said about the bad you go through, like. You know, you've got two types of people. It, you, you're the kind of person you either allow it to make you or break you. And, uh, you know, I think with what you go through on television, to know that there's a greater purpose than just going on there for a paycheck, you know, building up your, your fame and notoriety and everything, like, you have a platform now to, to make a difference in the lives of others. And, like, it's super refreshing to hear you say that. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm a small-town girl from Louisiana. If you'd have asked me this 10 years ago, I'd have laughed in your face. So for, for, you know, not even just small town girls, like, I mean, I'm now on the challenge. I'm now on Florida, Bama shore and I'm going to continue to grow. And I promise you that I'm, I work every day towards it, but I just want them, if I could do it, other people can, or I still have a lot to learn in the game. So the challenges are one thing, but also learning how to politic, how to perform the puzzles, the strength, the endurance. I'm still just trying to learn everything. I'm only on my season two so yeah. i can only grow as a competitor I, as a person just in real in life I, I will say though like coming into uh war of the world's one and then you know making it as far as you did like to making it to one that final which is an insane final but like again your first season making it that far like that that's a big accomplishment in itself. It's incredible. That's what I told impressive. myself when I was about to pass when I was about to pass out. You like girl you did it. You yeah, again yeah. like there was a lot of people that were in that house with you that would not have even made it like one lap on that you know bike in the desert or whatever it was. Well, it, it, that's I mean of course the bike so you we had about 30 miles. It was one thing but Something I want to say on my season one, that last lap I did, one thing I told myself was just make it to the checkpoint. And for me, I made it to the checkpoint. I couldn't go anymore. So my struggle was making it there. Yeah. But I, I did that. And I I mean, people can say what they want. Everybody has their own opinions. I give up. Now I'm learning to push myself further. So when I feel that ounce of wanting to give up, I go one more rep. And that's what I'm working on. I just had to learn the game. Uh, again, like, 
99% of the people watching it couldn't have done even all the stuff that led up to getting to the final. So, like, yeah, we don't, obviously we don't like when people quit, but there's a difference in, like, where your body gives out on you, and we've talked about that, than when you just are like, oh, this is hard, I want to go home. Like, there's a, you know, there's a No, my out. body was crashing. Number one, my, I couldn't even, like, my hip flexor, my leg was so dead, I, it's almost like I couldn't even walk with it. And then, I mean, we're the, we're healthier when we go in than when we leave here because we're drinking, we're eating, we're doing cha- – like, it's just a different – it's a whole nother ball game. Yeah. Uh, again, we've never seen a, cha- a final where they were like, hey, you guys should probably have IVs in the middle of this. Like, it, it was it was a tough final. Oh, yeah. I mean, people pa- – I think we had three or four pass out, yeah. just dropped. It's It was nuts. So, yeah, before we get you out of here, let's, uh, let's do some questions from our Patreon. Um and we may have talked about some of these. I, I kind of scanned through them a little bit, but uh, you know, some people definitely want to know a little bit more specifics about like Florida, Bama, or uh, Party of Down course. South, things like that. Of course. So, uh, Michelle said, "How did you like your experience in Florida with the Florida Bama people? Do you keep in contact with anyone? And uh, do you ever talk to Jeremiah?" Okay, number one, my experience was incredible. I didn't think I would go in there and get along with everybody like I did, but I did. Yes, I still talk to them. And number three, no, I do not talk to Jeremiah. See, I don't even know who Jeremiah is, if I'm being honest. Uh, But we have a couple questions about him, I know. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure. um, Yeah, she also said she just loved how honest and kind you were uh, and that you always see the best of people. So she was a big fan. So she wanted you to know that. Oh, my God. Well, I tried. Don't get me wrong. I could be sweet, but I could also be sour. (laughs) But So. All right. Next question. We've got Sam wanted to know, uh, was filming for Floribama Shore the same as filming for Party Down South? And what are your favorite things about the challenge? Okay, so filming Floribama Shore was a little bit more different from Party Down South, only because I was a little bit older, so I was more mature. Was it a bigger aspects. production? Like, were there, was there more crew and stuff around you, or was it about the same? I'm sorry, what was that? What Was it a similar production size, or was there a bigger crew for Floribama, or was it about the same? No, so it was the same production company. So I had worked with them on Party Down South, who are doing who was doing Floribama Shore. Okay. And so the other part was, what are your favorite things about the challenge? The insane challenges we get to do. Like I said, I'm an adrenaline junkie. I love doing things that scare me. As scared as I am, and I, ha- I will have a lot of anxiety. I will conquer them and then just get better and... I mean, I get to do so much with the challenge. You get to travel. You get to face your own fears. So I would have to say that's probably one of them. So this, them. Is, this isn't this is a Patreon question, but just kind of banking into that, what what was, like, what is, like, your biggest fear that you have to face or have had to face so far? Is it just that, was it the airplane and War of the Worlds one? Oh, my God, that one sucked. Yeah, oh, I, I remember. I've had, had, I've had a panic attack a mid plane. I said, "I'm getting red. I'm getting red." <laughs> well, I suffer from anxiety. I mean, it's been clear on my social media. I'm pretty open about it. So, it, it's just different going into some of these challenges when my focus is a little bit different. But learning how to work with that, and then just you know being more athletic and learning and growing and challenging myself. Yeah, again, like, I I just remembered, like, specifically that airplane, if I remember right, it seemed like that was one that you were dealing with. And a lot of people deal with heights, and, you know, obviously spinning around in a big metal tube is not fun. Um, well, see, if I'm in a harness and there's safety gear, I'm I, that doesn't scare me. Okay. Because, you know, I'll do it. Now, the I love to swim because I'm from the bayou, so that don't scare me. Swimming don't scare me. Now, the cold... The cold water, when you get there, when you jump in the water and it cu- it hits you like a thousand knives and you just all of a sudden can't breathe, those, it, it's not painful because your muscles feel great the next day, but it's painful to go through. You you weren't in the water in the thing like a week or two ago, right? 
like what where no i got out of that one okay. i got out of that one <laughs> i was like let me chop the ice i'm strong I'm I, I thought a big you were block. up top yeah well uh, we were gonna but i was on west and tori's team and tori really really said she felt confident about going in and i was like you go ahead girl go do it go get that puzzle let her volunteer for that go yes this so, is not nope so Robin uh, wanted to know, was Gus and Jeremiah's fight on Floribama as silly as it looked on TV? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, what Was the plan also for you to continue with Floribama this summer and did like the corona situation mess all that up? Well, here's it. I mean, honestly, the with – Going back to the Floribama Shore House, it, I mean, it has. I was a room, I was a guest of Gus, so it has to be that they want to welcome me in for that. And of course, I would always love to go back, but you never know where we'll go from here. So, with everything going on, if we can't stop the spread, then I'm just gonna be home and I'm ready to get out. Yeah, <laughs> again, I, I I think everyone's right there with you. I okay. am. Our next question is a little bit long. She's got kind of like an explanation that goes with it. Um, okay. Carrie wants to know, what do you see yourself doing in 10 years? Uh, she said, I know it's a generic question, but I feel she has the ability to help young kids in ways that is unimaginable. Uh, from building up the week with her amazing speeches, from learning and growing from her past, she can show people there is a light at the end of every tunnel. I feel the energy and presence I felt in the room in Nashville should not be used only on TV. People need to benefit from her. She can do amazing things. I'm certain of it. She met you. Oh in my Nashville. God. Yeah. My heart. <laughs> that was yeah, so she, sweet. She She's one of our patrons. And like after we, cause we hung out with them after the show and stuff at, at whatever that after party was at that bar. And Oh yeah. At Live uh, Oak. Yeah. She, uh, she just kept talking about like, how like amazing it was to meet you and how like just genuine you were and like she's been really looking forward to this interview yeah yeah oh my god okay so what do you see yourself doing in 10 years that was the main gist of it okay so i love you but girl sometimes i don't even know what i'm doing next week yeah i, I can plan that. okay so here's my thing of course i will set goals up for myself i i, I create vision boards so i know where the the ending point is, but you know, if you'd ask me in January, if I thought we would be here, that's not on my vision board. Yeah. However, I can adapt and I can adjust and I can make changes to better suit myself. Of course, I can only learn and grow from this. I'm trying to take this time. We can't go anywhere, but I can make myself better instead of doing other things. I could focus on uh, different hobbies, reading more books, maybe furthering my education. It just can go anywhere. So for me, I'm just trying to find that in myself to make sure I can project it onto others. But I'm also enjoying some town time. Yeah. Because yeah, with the awesome. challenge and Floribama, you know, we're, we're constantly, I filmed six months out the year. Then I was bartending, you know, so. I'll be honest, the downtime hasn't been that bad for me. Now, I am ready to be around people. I'm an extrovert, so. Yeah, see, I, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big introvert, and so, like, honestly, this has not been the worst thing in the world for me. Hannah here, it's driving her crazy. I'm the definition of, an, definition of an extrovert, and so not being around people has been the worst. <laughs> and, and that's understandable. Honestly, okay, I'll say I'll bo I'm both. Like, I need to go around people, and then I need a long time. Yeah. Yep. But I'm okay with being around people. You sound like you're, like, the, the in-between of us two. Probably the healthy balance. Yeah. <laughs> I would call that. Girl, <laughs> um, I don't know if you call this healthy, but we'll go with balance. So so Paul <laughs> said, Paul said uh, why does everyone call the new people prospects instead of rookies now? Uh, this is a relatively new thing. They usually are called rookies. Have you have you noticed that on your time on the show? I mean, I have noticed it, but I haven't put that much into it. I so mean, it's I not, never really... It's not something like productions, like, hey, why don't you use this phrase instead of rookies or something like that? Well, I mean, I also won't talk about production. Okay. You know, like that's just something that we, we're making a TV show, so regardless of the term, but... Mm -hmm. That's just not 
nothing that I feel we should go further on with the um, interview with. Okay. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's Something fine. small on the side. Like, Listen. it's not nothing I feel like should be brought up. Paul, Paul likes to sometimes, he's he's our stat guy. Like, he knows, like, the ins and outs of the challenge. He's like, a lawyer. He's a lawyer, so it's well, like. Well, Paul, he, calm down. Listen. <laughs> uh-huh. Not, we, okay, statistics are good. I love them. I love seeing them on the back end. But, like, we don't need them for everything. We don't need a spreadsheet for a spreadsheet for everything. Yeah, he, he's he's like got it all locked away in his brain, and it's like, hey, who did this one challenge eight years ago? And he's like, I got gotcha. you. And like, I don't. I know mean, my- it's understandable. Everybody's different, and yeah. I try to go that way, but I'm not sure, Paul. <laughs> so, I don't we'll, know. We'll tell Paul to shut up. <laughs> so, oh god, I don't want to be rude. The Paul, it's fine. Come yeah, on, yeah, I'll do out of anyone. He deserves it. We love him, but we kind of he he and Zach kind of riff on each other a lot so it's it's fine he's from detroit. so he can take oh yeah detroit he's from detroit enough. and he likes to talk crap about the grizzlies because jake and i do a memphis grizzlies podcast as well and okay so it's a big thing um so, so he's talking yes absolutely <laughs> yeah he's earned the right to be crapped on yes <laughs> okay well you go paul you go i'm just not answering it so uh jd uh he, he kind of talked a little bit about your time on cmt um but basically, uh, when CMT did the spinoff cast of Party Down South, did you original guys feel like they're trying to just get cheaper replacements, or like was it just like a weird scheduling issue, something like that? That's one more thing I won't talk about, but These, only it's, because it's all the Detroit guys. He's from Detroit too. They're all <laughs> screwing you over. No, I, well, I mean, it's a it, understandable question, but honestly, I'm not on the CMT board. I'm a CMT I'm a CMT cast member. So there are certain things that don't come to me directly. Yeah. I, I don't know the reasoning. I mean, I wish I would have known. We could have we could have did something better. That's marketing, that's on CMT. That has nothing to do with me as talent for that show. I have no clue. Yeah. So Detroit, calm down. <laughs> Again. I can't they, answer that for you. They yet. they deserve it. They gang up on us about Memphis. It's fine. Yeah. It's so. okay. Uh, Paul also uh, says um, Wes has recently uh, come out in an interview with Susie and Sarah from the Brain Candy whatever um, that he said that Kayla makes $300,000 a year doing OnlyFans stuff and so he wanted to know if she talked about her OnlyFans in the house and if that was a true number. She makes three hundred thousand a year. That's, That's what, what Wes said. Wes said, she "You know makes- what, y'all? I buy it. I'm about to start this. <laughs> I like, this. Wes, Wes, in the interview because I listened to it, he said she. He didn't say her name, but he said someone that's in their that, that little Kansas City house they're doing right now. He said makes three hundred thousand, and the guy, which would be Devin Walker, that's doing OnlyFans. He said he'll make one hundred twenty-five to one hundred fifty thousand. I mean, good for them. If that's how you want to make your money, I mean, that's okay. I'm. He just. I thought clarity. about it. Listen, I thought about it. Let me tell you, if you thought I don't, I didn't do my research, and could, you know, I'm still questioning myself because I get. He wants clarity on like the the if that number is accurate because I, I know he's talked about it with, with in our we have a Slack group with our patrons because he was asking how much OnlyFans takes and when I looked it up it said they took 20% so you still would make like $240,000 if that was correct um holy I, cow I'm missing that's out that's what I said yeah I god can't. dang it why I gotta have these big <laughs> morals <laughs> I don't know oh. again they, all, all the Detroit people they just cause problems for everybody so uh, no I mean to each his own if she can if I mean I don't know her number I don't talk money with people unless we're negotiating yeah, again, so, like it just it kind of came out of nowhere because I think Susie was like, "Hey, how much do those people make?" And he was like, "The girl in our house will make about this, and the guy that's doing it will make this." And it's it's definitely Kayla and Devin because they're the only people in the house that do that. Um, which we've interviewed all these people, so like we're, we're we're all friends with all of them. Like it's it's nothing. Like we're not trying to get anything bad out of them or anything like that. Um, Again, uh, no, I mean, like I said, I don't know what they make. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's wild the, the way that, that that's kind of blown up in a lot of people for, from reality TV. It's like, that's how they're like apparently making a whole lot of money. That's, that's a killing. I mean, or so are you basic? I, 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 y'all, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
okay. Um, that's well, just not, I, I mean, it is, I'm, I don't know what they're making. I don't ask what people make unless I'm trying to invest or I'm trying to scout out a business deal, but that's a good amount of money. Yeah, I would yeah. be pretty, I would be well off. a lot of money. Day. Okay. Well, we will end it on a light, easy question. Uh, Robin has, uh, she's been watching Party Down South season one for the first time. And oh she just God. wants to know, can you speak French fluently or is it just the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, so I can do the Pledge of Allegiance and I, I can understand French, but I also know Cajun French, which is from South Louisiana. So it is different. It's, it's very different. Is that the same as yes. Creole or is that its own? Yeah, type? it's Creole. It's okay. Creole. So c- can you do it in French? Well, I see. Huh? Tadu. I'm going to call you a tadu. What does that mean? You a hard head. Okay. There we that, go. That's fair. For me, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. When I see, there's a lot, there's so much I could say, but it's Cajun French, which is different. Like you said, it's, it's Creole from uh, what they speak in other areas. Do you feel like the water boy was an accurate representation of your culture? Absolutely not. <laughs> listen, if I get one more water boy freaking reference, listen. I get it. I know what y'all think of us, but look no, where I, I'm at. So we're not that. Listen, crazy. we are we are all from like the Hannah. South. Hannah moved there later, but Jake and I grew up in a small town in rural West Tennessee where it was like 2,500 people total. There was one red light in the whole city. It's not a city; it's a town. Like we get it. Like we get how we, we're portrayed and all that. Well, I I grew up in Knoxville, and so I was around like the mountain men, and that was my dialect until I moved to Memphis. And boy, did those Memphians break me of it real quick. Yeah. I, well, I just... okay. So there are people like that I know. There, are, there. It, it is. It's southern, but we're no. I'm not going to say that. People say I remind them of the girl on that show. Oh really? I don't. I don't see that. I've gotten that. You. I've gotten that a lot. Um. Yeah. I. I haven't watched that movie. Man, probably fifteen years. But uh, if someone has dark hair and blue eyes, people tag me. So. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it, again, it. I. I don't see it personally. I just. Uh, that. That is like the definition to me of like the deep Cajun, uh, especially the the like farmer guy that rubbed his nipples a lot. Murray, I, I I don't know his name in the in the movie. He was. Oh, Sean I thought Hunt. you were talking about. Who do you think I was talking about? Someone in real life. <laughs> yeah, in Party Down South, my no. friend Murray. He's from Jackson, Mississippi. I don't know. It's oh just my different. Gosh. That's where my parents went to college. Was in Jackson, Mississippi. LSU, baby. No, not there. It was a Bible college. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just saying LSU. That's who I support. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. Again, that that was the the end of our questions. Uh. And. We always try to do that with our patrons because they want to know specific stuff, and we try to always work those in. Um, before we get out of here with you, uh, is there anything you want to plug? Is there any sort of like, you know, thing you got in the works that you want to talk about, or you know, anything along those lines? Yeah, I mean, just stay tuned. I'm coming. Up, I got a lot coming out in this season of the challenge, or just in general. You said you wanted to plug in. Yeah, no, do you have anything you want to plug? Like, you, you got, like, hey, you got another TV show you're working on or anything like that? Or okay, do you so just want us to watch you on this season of The Challenge? No, yeah, just watch The Challenge and also follow me on social media. My handle's at Maddie Lynn Bro. I'm on Twitter, Facebook. I just got my TikTok back, so I'm back on there. So check me out. And uh, every Wednesday at 8, 7 Central on MTV, check me out. We We will definitely be watching every week. And... Again, it has been a pleasure to talk to you, uh, to finally get to talk to, I guess, our Tennessee challenge people. I don't know. Like, I know you're not officially from Tennessee, but, you know, you're close enough for us. Well, I feel like I was born in Louisiana and I was adopted in Nashville. That's perfect. So We need more Southern girls on here. I hear you. Yes, we do. I don't know what's going on, but we need some country. Well, you know, maybe you'll you'll bring in that influence because apparently everywhere you go, people just want to put you on TV. So, you know, maybe you can bring some of your friends along. You know, I just happens. don't get it. I don't get it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just, well, I just well, live at this point. Uh, again, it was it was fun getting to know you. We'll definitely be watching the rest of the season, and uh, we hope that you know. Again, we're spoiler free, so we hope that we get to see you as long as it's able to be on TV. So, 
we uh we'll, we'll definitely be watching but we appreciate you coming by maddie oh of course thank you guys so much for having me so we hope that you guys all enjoyed that interview with maddie we were lucky enough to meet her as we talked about at challenge mania nashville and we had a ton of fun with her and i'm not kidding right away she was like, oh, you're from Tennessee and you have a podcast? When can I come on? And we were just kind of blown away that we didn't even have to ask that she was down to talk whenever. And so it, it's someone that we wanted to talk to for a while. And we're glad it finally worked out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely hope to have her back on again at some point. You know, she's just one of those people that it's just super easy to, to mesh with, it seems. And, you know, we she she killed it on war of the world's one we hope she does as good in total madness again we filmed or not filmed but we recorded this after episode six so we don't know anything that's happened past this point in the season but obviously we wish her the best because she seems to be you know a genuinely nice person and you always like to see that on reality tv someone who's genuine and you know seems to uh to have a you know, just just a good heart. You, you, you miss that sometimes. Yeah, because I sure don't get it around you in hand. So. That's definitely the truth. So as we said at the top of the show, if you made it this far, check us out on Twitter at Smashing Heads. Instagram and Facebook is at Smashing Heads Podcast. And then our website is SmashingHeadsPodcast.com. It has links to our Patreon and our web store, which I did not talk about earlier. Um, but we also, you can go directly to Patreon.com slash Smashing Heads Podcast. And check out there, check out the rewards and then our back catalog. We've probably got, God, I don't even know how many back episodes. We've been doing Patreon for about a year now. So there's a lot of exclusive content on there. And we would love to have you along for the ride. Again, patreon.com slash Smashing podcast. And if you are new here, we have more interviews lined up. We have weekly recaps that will be coming out every week as Total Madness goes on. And then in the off season, we do an old season of the challenge. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll kind of go from there. So... Hope you enjoyed the interview, and we will be back with you next time. I said it at the top, but I'll say it again here at the end. Have a good night, everyone. Ooh.